Well, it's spring, heading into summer, which means it is everyone's favorite season. Of course, I'm talking about tick season. Let's dig a little bit deeper into these amazing arachnids and find out about the science behind ticks. Welcome to Destructive Creativity. We exist for you, for science, and for fun. So if any of those things interest you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you've already subscribed, well, thanks. Let's go over the basics of what ticks are. First off, ticks are not bugs. They are arachnids. They are in the same family as spiders and scorpions. They have eight legs. There are two different types of ticks. There are hard ticks and soft ticks. And the way that you can tell the difference between them is hard ticks are hard and soft ticks are soft. Duh. Okay, so hard ticks are the ones that carry the most nasty diseases. Those are the ones we're going to be talking about the most today and during this series. Uh, classified as hard ticks are deer ticks, dog ticks, uh, all of the nasty ones. If you were to look at a soft tick and a hard tick, the differences between them are quite pronounced. A hard tick has a hard plate on its back called a scutum. This scutum protects it from being squished. That's why ticks are so hard to kill. Especially if you've ever tried to kill one after you've brushed it off your skin, they seem to be mildly immortal. Now, soft ticks look like that. Look really freaky because it looks like they don't even have a mouth. Their body extends over top of it, so its mouth is actually kind of like right here. It's nasty. <sighs> Let's focus in on the life cycle of a tick. Now a tick goes through four changes. First, it's egg stage, then it's larval, then it's nymph, then it's adult stage. And in order to progress in between any of these stages, the tick must have a blood meal. And yeah, it eats blood. Okay, so let's start it off with tick eggs. So these little tick eggs are laid in the spring by a female tick and they can actually already be carrying a great number of nasty diseases. Okay, so we have these little baby ticks running around all over the place looking for their first blood meal of their life. And they're only going to eat one meal during the first year of being alive. Usually in the first year of their life, they're only going to target small prey. So small prey like rodents or birds. It's important to note at this point of their lives, ticks are minuscule. Sometimes they are as small as a poppy seed and very hard to detect on your body. Okay, so once they've had their first blood meal, they will overwinter through winter. Once spring hits, they will molt into their nymphal stage. And it's at this point that they are the most dangerous towards humans because they're still so small, you probably won't be able to see them before you brush into them. And even when they're on your body, you probably won't be able to identify them. At this point, they can carry diseases because they have been infected by whatever they've bitten before, whether, whether that be birds or rodents or any other animal that they bit. Once they found a blood meal, they will disengage and molt into the adult stage of their life. And once they're in their adult stage, this is where they are both most dangerous because they have the most pathogens and the most obvious because they're bigger. So you should be able to avoid them a little bit easier and you should be able to see them on your skin and identify them. Adult ticks are really only active in the fall because it takes them the full spring and summer to find a full blood meal and then disengage and molt. Once they are their adult stage, female ticks will find one more blood meal. They need this blood meal to survive the winter and once the winter is over, they'll wake up and lay their eggs again. But male ticks also, because they seem to just not want to die, some varieties will take a final blood meal as well, and then they'll just go through the winter and then just die. Ticks go on quests. They go questing. Yes, this is because they don't have wings. They can't actually go out and find their prey. They can only crawl very slowly or quest. And questing means you go up on something high and you stand there and you open your arms and go, hello, come to me, I want to suck your blood, and they just wait there and eventually they usually get lucky just from the sheer mass of ticks and animals and something will brush by them and then they'll go, oh, thank you for bringing me your blood. So once a tick has found a host, what happens? Well, it's going to migrate, as I said, to some place that's not gonna be disturbed, whether that be armpits or groins or uh, behind the ears, someplace safe. 
and it's going to bite. Usually it's completely painless. You can't feel a tick biting you. But you will feel the effects because it's going to be attached for a long time. It's going to be attached between 3 and 10 days before it's fully engorged with blood and will let go of its own volition. So in that time, it's going to be starting to get big. In fact, an adult tick will take on enough blood so that it will grow from a quarter inch across to the size of a marble, about a half inch round. It's during this stage that they can transmit Lyme disease because they'll be infected with it from their previous meals. Lyme disease is unique in that the tick actually has to be attached and feeding on you for more than 36 hours, whereas some of the other lesser diseases can be transmitted instantaneously. It's important to know that only a small minority of ticks actually carry diseases, so you shouldn't panic if you see a tick sucking your blood. Simply remove it, which I'll cover in a future episode, and just watch for any of the symptoms related to bad diseases. I'm Jonathan Allers, this is Destructive Creativity, I'm glad you're here, see you next time!